again. How are you getting on with the course so far? I'm really excited to teach you the next lesson as it's one of the most important parts of the entire course, succeeding at the medical interview. By this stage, the spot's yours to throw away. The way it normally worked when I was in Cardiff interviewing other people was that they have certain criteria on which they give a score out of 10 for. To get into medical school, you need to be getting nines and tens. The reason I tell you this is that it's completely unaffected by the other people interviewing. At this stage, it's not you versus everybody else, it's you versus you. So try to convince them that you're a great prospect for them to take on. They've called you to interview because they want to give you a place. So just make it easy for them to do so. The energy you give off is contagious and one of the most important things you do when you walk into the room at interview. Obviously, it's a formal setting, so you have to be calm and professional. But people respond to the energy and the passion that you give off. So when you walk into the room, smile. Be genuinely grateful and glad to be there. Shake the hand of each person, look them in the eye, and sit down and compose yourself. From my experience on the interview panels, it's true that you can almost tell within the first 30 seconds whether you're going to offer the person a place or not. This is partly self-affirming because if the interviewer warms to you, they tend to subconsciously ask you slightly nicer questions, and then this gives you a better chance of success. But work this into your favour. Communication has been shown to be about 80% body language and facial expression, 15% the tone of voice that you use, and only 5% is the actual verbal content that you say. So when you enter the room, be warm, be friendly and polite. And the chances are that you will get an easier ride than someone who's closed off and cold. Sit comfortably, leaning slightly forward, in a position that shows alertness and poise. Don't fidget and avoid any really annoying habits. It's also possible to record yourself and watch back for any annoying habits that you can spot yourself. During your practice, ask your observers to point out any irritating mannerisms and make sure that you stamp them out by the time of interview. If you think you won't be able to keep your hands still, take a folder with your record of achievements and you can hold on to this during interview. This may contain certificates for any awards or printouts of interesting articles that you've read. You can hold this to avoid fidgeting with your hands and if they ask, you can show them some of the contents inside. Maintain good eye contact split evenly across the panel members. When a panel member asks you a question, focus mainly on them and occasionally glance at everybody else in the room. Be confident. All the interviewers want is to get the best out of you. You have one opportunity to let them know why you'll be a great doctor. Shyness is not going to help you, so just leave it at the door. Answer questions with passion and conviction. At this stage, other than your previous grades and work experience, which is similar to your peers, the only thing that distinguishes you from the rest is your ability to show that this is what you really, really want in life. Interviewers are not trying to trip you up. They may ask you the odd question that you weren't expecting, but generally they want to help you. Do not lie. Be prepared to talk in depth about anything that you put on your UCAS application. If people smell blood, they will give you a very, very hard time. I once sat on an interview panel where this one young man claimed that he'd worked for the St John's Ambulance and provided medical care for a young man at a rugby match that he saw who got injured. When probed further, he couldn't even provide any details. The interviewers were a bit surprised that he'd done this job, yet couldn't tell a story or couldn't provide any details about a specific thing that happened. After a while, it turned out that he actually wasn't part of the St John's Ambulance at all, but in fact was a player at this rugby match and witnessed the St John's Ambulance help this player rather than provide any care himself. This made him look really, really bad and actually made the interview really difficult for himself. Because they could tell he wasn't telling the truth, the tone of the interview changed suddenly and became somewhat of an interrogation. For example, he said then that he worked as a waiter and instead of the questions being, oh, well, what did you learn from being a waiter? It would be more like, What's the name of the restaurant? What dishes do they serve there? And there were questions that were more really aimed at fact checking whether he was telling the truth, rather than letting him express what he learned and how this would make him a great doctor. This young man completely ruined his chances of getting into medical school because he told a lie. Don't fall into that trap. On the day, there will be several panels. So who you get is purely luck. The panel is usually composed of one senior clinical staff, who's usually a hospital consultant, one senior lecturer, who's usually a researcher, and either a medical student or a general practitioner who lives locally. They're usually quite friendly, but sometimes they may play the old 
good cop, bad cop routine. Try not to be phased by this. Often, the interviews who seem unfriendly are actually the most generous markers. Maintain your composure and don't let their demeanour stop you from giving the best answers that you've prepared. Stay focused and present in the room. Don't think about how you're coming across because it distracts you from what's happening in the room. You're probably doing much, much better than you think. So don't dwell on minute details and little words that you said that didn't sound right. It's really important to have some good, specific reasons why you want to study there. These don't necessarily have to be about the medical school. Also remember, the person interviewing you actually lives in the city that you're applying to. If you say some intelligent comments about their city, they'll be certainly flattered. And also, you may even surprise them with something they didn't know before about the place they live. Maybe for example, Birmingham has one of the best hockey facilities in Europe and you're a keen hockey player. Or maybe you love stand-up comedy and Edinburgh is known for having the best festival in the world for stand-up comedy every summer. Show that you care about the place. Be specific. Find things about that specific place that you can't find at any other cities in the world. Don't be afraid of silence. When someone asks you a question, it shows real maturity and confidence to think before you speak. I was told that you can even say something along the lines of, may I just have a minute to think about that? My partner at medical school came top of the year three years running and every year she would have to viva to determine the best student. Every time she was asked a question, you could see her pause while she thought about the answer. This was to organise her thoughts and say something intelligent. Keep your answers short, but don't bore your interviews with long, boring answers. It should be a conversation. Keep your voice and energy enthusiastic throughout. Your interview technique can really steer the conversation where you want it to go. You can leave little teasers with the way you end your sentences. That leads them to ask you about something that you want to talk about. It's like dropping little hooks of bait at the end of each sentence and then they will latch onto them and ask you the questions that you want them to ask. For example, you could be talking about time management, but actually you want to tell them a story about your work experience. You could hence say, yes, time management is very important for doctors and is something that I observed when I was on my work experience in the orthopedic department. This usually prompts them to ask you, well, please tell us about your work experience. Then you have control of the conversation. Once you've done this, you can repeat this process several times so that the end of one answer has a hook that leads to the next question that you want them to ask you. This way, you can almost plan how one answer will lead to a chain of hooks and questions that lets you tell the story as you'd like. Most importantly of all, just be yourself and don't worry about personality types. As one of my consultants once said when deciding whether to put through a particularly nerdy candidate, well, we all need researchers and pathologists too. It's not about charm, but if they like you, it will leave a more favourable impression. However, you still have to have the skills and credentials to back it up. Knowing a little bit about current medical issues and politics will set you apart from the candidates who are unfamiliar with them. We have also linked to a list of subjects that are worth knowing something about for your interviews. In the next lesson, we'll discuss a few of the other things that you can expect to occur during your interview.